appreciate you coming. Uh, <clears throat> I promise that uh, next year, or for my next presentation, I'm going to change the title of my presentation, make it a little bit smaller, uh, maybe more uh, more interesting or appealing to people. Um, my plan is to uh, uh, share with you uh, my our experiences in implementing uh, a solution, uh, whether being you know, uh, not only in SharePoint, but also uh, something that uh, the same technology, the same processes that you would do to apply in SharePoint, you can simultaneously apply it across the enterprise, whether it be file shares or other business processes. Okay, so my name is Juan Salaya. Again, thank you for coming. I view um, one uh, to see a live demo um, uh, of the solution. Uh, we are hosting the Kodak booth. Uh, and if you come, uh, come by, I'll be happy to show it to you. Uh, unfortunately, our Wi-Fi access here is not very good. So uh, we are going to, uh, I'm gonna show you a video of what I would have shown you. And I can show you, if you come by the booth, I actually show you live so that you can see that there's no smoke and mirrors there, okay? Uh, my Twitter handle, our company website, which is uh, cdlac.com, and our company Facebook page, they're all down there, if you're interested, okay? So first thing, uh, we want to welcome you to uh, the uh, seventh annual Houston Tech. This is my first time uh, presenting. I uh, hope to be here next year again. And um, I think they got tired uh, of hearing me on SharePoint Saturday, so they said go to the Tech Fest, right? So, anyway, so I'm doing both of them. Uh, and uh, but uh, appreciate your, our diamond sponsors. Make sure to visit their uh, their sites. Um, this presentation will be available at the uh, Houston Tech website. It will also be available. Uh, we will also communicate to you via email and uh, send you links. Um, if uh, you don't get it, please call that gentleman right there. His name is Carlos. He's going to be sending it out. <laughs> so, anyways, um, don't forget your bingo card. And if you come by the uh, booth, uh, we are uh, also have some raffles uh, and some discounts for Codex scanners, being that we are a Codex. Okay, and Codex is also a sponsor. All right, so. Uh, quickly to go over uh, my presentation, uh, what I'm going to uh, talk about is why it is that we want to be, we want to do automatic metadata tagging. Okay. Um, before I continue, uh, everybody here works with SharePoint, I presume, right? Uh, there aren't that many of you, so you can shake your head. It'll be fine. <laughs> the uh, second question: uh, We got developers. Now you have to raise your hands. Administrators. Also, you know, you do Windows too, right? Like I do. Okay. <laughs> Literally. So, okay, because what I'm going to talk about here, um, it has a little bit of development, uh, but you have to understand the development, uh, the term store, understand how that works, and, uh, and, and it's really focused around implementation because everything that I'm going to talk to you about here is really out of the box. Okay? So uh, the implementation overview, uh, overview, we're gonna talk about the initial setup. Uh, this, uh, everybody has heard the word or understand what taxonomy is, okay? Because everything is driven by tech rules that we use taxonomies for. Uh, <clears throat> then we're going to uh, go through uh, how we leverage uh, those metadata and uh, then using SharePoint, the power of SharePoint to allow us to uh, implement the solution and, uh, and enforce the rules how that you can if you use Windows Rights Management, uh, things like uh, you know, automatic content type assignment, etc., based on the content of the data that you're storing in the server. Okay? So why metadata tagging? Um, <clears throat> most important is that right there, uh, data privacy and security compliance. Uh, every CIO, CFO, and CEO, their main concern at a corporate level is what, uh, what is the exposure that the company has, right? So I'll, I'll show you uh, why it is, right? So data privacy is important. You, you know, everybody knows about it. We want to protect our privacy names, social security numbers, telephones, et cetera. 
uh, when you look at a small to large organizations, even our small company, we have thousands of documents with information that we either get from people, that we generate, and after 25 years in business, trust me, we have a lot of documents, right? Historical information. Second is uh, data transparency, right? We want to, with, uh, with the application of metadata, we uh, want to make sure that we allow for documents to be found by people, right? That's the whole concept for data transparency, right? If I put in a document uh, into the system, and uh, John on the other side, my counterpart, wants to, in another department, uh, has an interest in the content of the document, um, and he doesn't know what the document is about, right? but there's gonna be some relationship, by applying metadata, we want to apply the metadata that will make it easy for him to find, even though he doesn't know the document except Data transparency. Records management compliance. <clears throat> Everybody knows about records or has heard records about records management, right? What's the hardest part of records management is applying the record retention schedule. And the way we do it today, the majority of the company is we manually tag documents, okay? This document has this record retention code uh, and the fallacy with that is that I will give the document to every single one of you here in the, uh, in the room and you will, and I give you a set of a hundred different codes and you will come up with different codes. Some will be the same, but based on the content and your interpretation, you will apply, apply different record retention to the document. And, which I just alluded to a minute ago, improve search. We want more precision. So, if I can automatically tag documents using the, uh, the organization's own internal vocabulary, the terms that we use, Etc. and I do that automatically based on content and based on rules, then I can standardize document uh, uh, information so that whoever searches, they're using our own internal content, uh, I'm sorry, our own internal vocabulary, and we can then find them. Especially if we are working together in partnership with other companies, as an example, here in Houston, there's all kinds of oil and gas companies. They're always in partnerships, right? Those partnerships require that they share information. So if you got a Chevron, an Exxon, and a Mo uh, uh, Shell working together, even though they have a common t terminology of oil and gas or exploration, etc., they have their own ways of naming and referencing things. So. If I am Shell and I'm getting documents from Exxon, I want to run those documents through my process to apply my own internal vocabulary. So when my exploration people, my downstream people are looking for information, they're going to be searching the way Shell searches, using the vocabulary that Shell searches. Right? So that's the importance of automatic metadata tagging for uh, enterprise search. All right. so. Data privacy, okay, we want to promote uh, secure collaborations, <clears throat> find, store, preserve, and most important, information rights management. Why is that? Because there are 63 countries in the world today that have regulatory compliance and say, hey, I have data protection laws, right? So an in, uh, international company that works in any one of the 63 companies their laws are different. Their requirements are different. Uh, we're working with a company right now, an international company that has a $4 billion company, manufacturing company that has eight manufacturing facility, I mean, eight manufacturing facilities in eight different countries, sales regions of 11 different countries, and 21,000 employees. So tell me how it is that they manage the regulatory compliance and a lot of the places that they work, actually all of the places work on that list. How do they manage compliance, okay? And I'll show you why it is that it's important at the CEO level from a financial perspective in a minute, okay? The second thing, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm sorry I get ahead of the slides many times as I talk, uh, automatic metadata time content type application. Also, we work in the SharePoint environment. We look at the content type to define you know, uh, all the different uh, uh, properties that a particular document will contain, right? 
Well, we want to be able, as we capture information, right, as, the, as, as we are onboarding information, whether it's automatic or through a manual process, we put lists where people have to manually, you know, send information and load information, right? Um, that doesn't mean they do it right. We do as much as we can. Uh, but at the end of the day, if we can have some procedures in place that we can grab documents, right? Uh, and based on the content of the document, uh, we can then identify uh, the tags, and based on those tags, we can then move the document to a library that has default content tags, we can automatically assign a content tag, right? Or we can assign a content tag prior to the document making it to that particular library. Okay. Uh, records management, the important part, like I mentioned earlier, is I have my record retention schedule. I take those record retention schedules, right, and, uh, uh, and uh, we um, turn them into a set of rules, right? The record retention schedule is asking us um, to determine, based on this description, this set of rules that they give us to interpret ourselves, that makes us evaluate what a document is and whether we should keep it forever or keep it for six months and where is it supposed to go, so on and so forth. I'm not suggesting, I'm not a records uh, manager, uh, but my function is to help the records manager automate and make sure that all records are properly uh, tagged according to their schedule. So, <clears throat> these are the consequences, right? I told you I was going to show you a minute ago. Why is it that uh, we want to ensure uh, from a uh, records management to be able to get rid of documents when we need them from an e-records perspective. I had a, a, the uh, uh, company, uh, a corporate uh, chief counsel, call me about a month and a half ago and said, let's talk about how it is that your solution works because I'm tired of e-discoveries every time we go to court, right? I want to get rid of documents and this is a company I'm not going to mention the name, but this is a company that um, uh, creates weapons, right? <laughs> so, you know, whether, you know, because they are the ones who manufacture, they always end up in court, right? So, uh, so what's important here for the CIO is this number right there, okay? And those are studies, right? Uh, you know, a compliance uh, um, lawsuit or issue that the government can reach into the millions of dollars, okay? Into the millions of dollars, right? Um, here's uh, the effect on management, uh, on the organization, you know, data breach, brand reputation, okay? So if you look at it from the top and you work your way down, from the bottom up is how you achieve compliance and you make those guys happy up at the top, right? So that's what we, uh, I'm here to share with you and how you go about doing this, or at least, how you go about doing it our way, right? And the way our experience has been. So, improve search, uh, <clears throat> whoops, sorry, wrong, wrong button. Uh, right, I mentioned using your own vocabulary. That's really important, okay? Especially when you onboard people, they come in, new employees, you gotta, they are going to learn the way you make reference to information, so that makes it easier to find. I mean, well, if we could have that, if Google, which by the way they're working on, uh, had the ability, whenever I do search, they know exactly how I search and what I mean in my own vocabulary and what I'm looking for, okay? My precision on my hit list would be a lot better than it is today. Okay? And they are working on, uh, actually met the gentleman that's heading that project, uh, uh, actually this past week at the Kodak Global Directions. Uh, conference. Okay, now, now that I give you up to the why, right? Let's talk about the how, okay? If we're talking about uh, um, metadata, right, and tagging documents, the way we do it, uh, the way we uh, implement this is through, uh, uh, through taxonomies, okay? So what you, what you do is you build a taxonomy, what we refer to as a taxonomy management environment, right? Taxonomy man management environment uh, is really easy, it's not that complicated uh, doing it with this technology. There's other technologies that may be more complex or more complicated, 
Uh, our experience has been that it, uh, that it doesn't take a whole army of people to create these taxonomies. And we are going to build this taxonomy. This, the technology helps us building the taxonomies uh, by analyzing the content. It does not automatically create taxonomies. You always need a subject matter expert underlined, okay? Important, but you don't need an army of them. Uh, you basically need people within their particular field uh, experience working with a set of documents in that particular area so that the statistical and semantic modeling of the software can look at its content, see the words, how they're being used, etc., and tell the subject matter expert, here's what I recommend, okay, here's the scores, okay, what is it that you want to use, okay, and this is not just word, but we're talking about phrases, and there's all kinds of different functionalities that you can use to better and make better the uh, set of rules, right? Uh, so a text, not a text, uh, a TME, as I call it, right, is really made of, like I said, it's made of technologies and processes. So it's just not one technology, there's a process and methodology that you go about using, doing it, right? Second, okay, subject matter experts, okay, like I said, I get ahead of the game, right? So here's the bullet item I was just talking about a minute ago, and business rules, uh, which you find content files, okay, are analyzed. Then we use this taxonomy to classify the documents, right? And then, wrong button again, and then, the, uh, and then based on the noting the taxonomy that, doc, that uh, documents classify to, we take that note, the description of that note, and we use it to tag the document. So it kinda, it's kind of like an upside down concept. It took me a little while to understand it, but in essence, we use the document, uh, uh, we grab the document, we use the taxonomy, classify the document to the taxonomy, now I know where it classified to, and then I grab the name of the node of the taxonomy and I add that as a tag to the document, right? Now each node of each taxonomy has a set of rules based on the content, right? So that uh, document could contain multiple tags because it could classify to multiple taxonomies and multiple nodes in each taxonomy. So I can create taxonomies that are corporate, taxonomies that are very vertical by mark, by particular products that I'm made, and taxonomies that are made uh, by department. So each department has its own vocabulary, so on and so forth, right? Kind of following the, the, the train of thought, I'm hoping that I can I'm walking you through this. I want to make it as simple as possible, okay? So <clears throat> SharePoint implementation, how in essence we do this, okay? There's two, uh, the, our approach is two ways. We, the, our partner, the, the technology that we use has a out of the box module that plugs right into SharePoint, okay? Uh, that allows us to do what I just explained as documents goes into SharePoint, right? So what happens is here we have uh, our SharePoint, we have definition of uh, content uh, types, uh, we have document creations, right? We have the classification engine and tagging process that is uh, interacting, interacting with the taxonomy management environment. Important, the taxonomy management environment and any taxonomy is that static. I mean, once you build it, you use it, it's a circle thing. You learn from it, you modify it, and you're constantly learning from it because, and mainly because, our business's process and our business, our environment changes. So there's new information coming in, so you have to monitor, not, not something that you do every day and you spend, on, uh, uh, again, a bunch of uh, uh, man hours on it, but you definitely have to monitor, right? And then, basically, uh, as you're tagging documents in here, you're also addressing the search capability of your customers within SharePoint to get a better search, okay? Mm -hmm. Again, in, in 2013, uh, Microsoft Search Engine is hundreds of miles ahead of everybody. Okay? It's great in Search Engine uh, as compared to 2007. 2010 was well, okay, but I have better search engines that I use for 2010, but 2013, there's no need to add another search engine. Okay? So, but if I don't have common terminology in the documents so, because, so that I can find documents, 
And I, I won't be able to find the documents, number one. Number two, the other important thing is this tax allows me to, um, <clears throat> what is, uh, I can't remember now what uh, Microsoft calls it now in SharePoint, uh, the ability to create and post this taxonomy and classify these documents and present them. My apologies, I can never remember what they call it. Okay, so anyway, so that's the implementation for SharePoint, an enterprise implementation. We, uh, what we did, we took that technology and we say, okay, we want everything in SharePoint, Microsoft wants everything in SharePoint. About, uh, got about eight years ago, I wrote a paper uh, publishing in, uh, in AIM, uh, and in that paper, yes, I, you know, everything is going to SharePoint, et cetera, but the fact of the matter is that not everything is going to land in SharePoint, it's just not the way it works, okay? At least not in my lifetime. Uh, it may be in the future, but right now, uh, we have documents and file shares, we have document uh, and information, not only documents, think of this. In a relational database on systems, we have data that's stored in, a, in, in those uh, databases, the structured data, right? We're talking here about unstructured. Right? Our structured data in the databases, those, uh, that content that is stored in a database, you could have the system go out, send the data over to the uh, uh, automatic metadata tagging process, let's say, and say, okay, what, you know, give me the tags that, generate, that are generated by, uh, by this content. So the way we do that, right, is again, here's our data, SharePoint, SharePoint, and any other data sources, including but not limited to business processes, right? So in a workflow environment, I'm onboarding documents, information, I could actually submit a request, pass that data to the system or to this solution, let's say, and say, give me the tags, right? And based on those tags, my workflow can take different routes based on the information that people are giving me. Uh, quick example, because I love example. Uh, <clears throat> a few months ago, we were working with the US Pacific Command in Hawaii. Okay? And what they wanted to do is they wanted to monitor their, uh, the documents that are going into the SharePoint environment. One of the things they wanted to do is they take a list of not acceptable words that they have and apply that to the content because they restrict what goes in. Right? So uh, as documents get loaded or as a process picks up, they could grab that information, query, decide whether that, doc that information is in that list, tag the document and have a workflow process take it, uh, you know, based on not only what the content is or what, uh, what the content is, but also what type of document it is. Because it might be a form that is reporting you know, the, uh, the use of, uh, or misuse of content. Anyways, <clears throat> so between your uh, classification between, and, and your tax, uh, taxonomy uh, management environment, right? Between your classification engine and between your data, you have a system in the middle that will, will allow you to monitor all your data sources, okay? SharePoint, file shares, that will allow you to communicate and provide a service to business process or other applications so they can go out and say, okay, I have this content, excuse me, what type of, uh, what, is, what is it? What are the rules that I need to apply to it so that I can make decisions, right? So uh, that, uh, oops, sorry. That right there, that system, uh, basically tags the document, we apply the search, right? And uh, that particular system is this one right here. In essence, what it allows you to do, right, is uh, whatever the share drive, pro process, etc. cetera, uh, <clears throat> the whole concept of it is that you have a particular tool and since technology changes, right, since technology changes, what you want to do is you have you want to have the ability to have other tools, right? So here's the concept of our approach. <clears throat> I can buy X uh, technology today, and because X technology is addressing a particular content type or a set of content type across my organization, right? technology advances exponentially. Two years from now, I have a new technology that's gonna give me better results, okay? Or may give me different results or additional results. 
But what I want to do now is I want to be able to decide whether I want to use, continue using technology one and add technology two to it so that when a document comes in, I can run it grant across all of the different technologies and give me the information. Because what I need is information to be able to tag this document. Right? <clears throat> or uh, I may take technology that looks at an image, or looks at a video, or looks like an audio, okay? and then tells me what it's all about so I can tag it. Right now, all we do is text. But our content is more than text. It's multimedia. Right? So that's the whole concept and idea when you look at an enterprise level, and when you look at, an, uh, at the distributed data sources across the enterprise. So what we look at is creating a foundation that lets me do that and allows me to uh, expand on it and grow as technology advances and as my requirements increase or change through the you know, life cycle of my business. So <clears throat> summarize, right? The manual metadata application, this is how we do it. Uh, think about uh, records management, right? Uh, Right? I have, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at document and say, okay, well, is this a record? Is it sensitive? Where do I put it? Uh, you know, these are the things that are going inside my head going, okay, I'm looking at the content, right? Then I decide based on, you know, the information that I gather, I decide where it actually goes, right? What we are proposing is that you take the document, right? You put it in the system and let the system through the classification technology, through record retention codes, etc., do it for you. Okay? Important on that is that you have a standard way of doing it. All the time, the same way. <laughs> and people cringe and some of my partners cringe whenever I say this. You may be doing it wrong, but you're doing it wrong consistently. Okay? So what that means is that you can change it and, and make, go back and automatically change all the documents. It consumes uh, cycles, the CPU, but it's a lot cheaper to do uh, automatically go and make changes and correct things when they're all uh, consistent than it is when you have a, a, a hush pot of information. I don't know what decisions were made. So the good thing is you make the changes, uh, you apply them, you see what the results are, you make more changes, you apply them, and obviously you don't, you don't go through the cycle in your production environment, you have a test environment, and then you roll it out to production, get feedback, put it on your test environment, do more changes, roll it out to production. Okay? So <clears throat> that, again, is hopefully summarizes the, you know, the whole idea for you. Okay, so Really quick, I'm going to go through some slides. I'm going to show you, in essence, how, you go, how we go about doing this, okay? And then, uh, if I have time, I'll show you the video. Uh, the video is seven minutes, uh, or that portion of the video is seven minutes. And, uh, and then, by the way, you can ask questions anytime you want. You can stop me if you have any questions. Uh, my job is to tell you everything in such a way that you don't have questions, but please ask questions, because uh, I want you to ask questions and make sure we clarify. All right, so. We start with a taxonomy management. Remember the taxonomy management environment, right? So what we have here is an aviation taxonomy, right? And the weather term. And if you look at the uh, weather, there are four particular manually created metadata. Okay? Now you can create some very basic uh, uh, taxonomies. You can there are taxonomies out on the internet that you can get for free. Some you can buy. But every single one of you personally have a taxonomy and use taxonomy on a daily basis. All you have to do, go to your PCs, look at the, your file system, you'll see all your folders where you follow your documents, that's your taxonomy, okay? Very simple. You can implement this very easily by going to a department, see how in their shared drive they follow all the documents, get all the information out, load it into the taxonomy, look at the documents, have the system tell you more about the rules of how to file this information. So it's not, you know, I want to make it simplistic for you. I mean, but it is, you can start simple again, and then you can make it as complex as you want, okay? So I have all this manually created metadata. Then what I do, is I go and grab a set of documents, I load them into the system. This is my development environment, okay? 
my uh, taxonomy management environment. <clears throat> and based on the content, the system will tell me, okay, here's, here are documents, uh, uh, here's uh, me uh, metadata that's contained, information that's contained inside this document, okay, that have to do with what you are giving me based on your initial uh, description of uh, the weather uh, folder or the weather leaf on the taxonomy. Right? Then I, as the subject matter expert, you know, select what I want. There are different scores. I mean, I'm not going to get into the technical aspects of the application, but in essence, uh, I select what I want and it automatically adds them to the taxonomy for me. Then, and I can actually, add, obviously, add more manually, right? So now, this is what we call highly relevant metadata because they were generated from the content that I use, okay? And obviously, the more content that I can get in my hands, the more relevant metadata I'm gonna get because the content that internally we're generating, guess what? It has terms and words, etc., that have to do with what we're saying and what we're communicating about that particular subject or that particular uh, area of expertise that, or development or product that we're doing. Yeah. So now we go and we apply it, right? This is a Office 365 right, environment, okay? So what I want to be able to do is, as I'm loading things into SharePoint, I'm using Office 365 because it's the easiest one to use, believe it or not. Uh, I don't have to worry about performance, they can take care of it. But anyway, so that's, and, and at the same time, that's the, harder one, the hardest one to integrate because of the restrictions of Office 365. Okay? So <clears throat> what, what I do is, okay, I define all my different taxonomies that, that documents are going in. Those taxonomies are managed metadata items, right? And you'll see the taxonomy uh, later on in the uh, term store. But <clears throat> here they are, right? These are right here, the different, okay? So what you see here is that in under aviation, right, we have these particular terms, okay? Wind, weather of this document, which is a PDF file, can a microburst or wind windshield crash a plane, okay? So this document actually got tagged with turbulence and counter. Okay. Um, that particular, that's a name of the leaf in the particular, uh, in the taxonomy. Okay. Yeah, let me see, I'm talking faster than I'm clicking. Okay. So this is the document that I classify. Okay. Now, when I search for turbulence in the document, it's a PDF file, I can't find it. The word turbulence, it's not there. So how is it that the system knows that it was tagged, I have to tag it with turbulence and count, if not even the word turbulence is there. And this is, I'm showing you what I've been telling you that we can do it. So if we look at uh, <clears throat> denoting the taxonomy weather of turbulence and counter, you see that we have turbulence, we see that we have turbulence and counter, wake borders, and in, in the term wind shear, okay? So, what happens is that when I, look to, I go to the document, the word wind shear is there, okay? So by me put a setting a rule, and this is a very simplistic example, okay? But the point I wanna show you is how it works. Okay? You can get more complex than this, obviously. But by the fact that that term wind shear is there, I could classify that document I tagged it with the term turbulence and counter. So when I am looking for documents or information about turbulent encounters within my fleet, okay, guess what? If the person that was doing the report or if the document that was written did not have the word turbulence encounter anywhere, but it made reference to wind shear, it made reference to any other term that under my set of rules for turbulence encounter, I, class, I identified and tagged it as turbulence encounter, I'll be able to find that document. So that's the example of uh, tagging documents for being able to create your own vocabulary for different areas based on how they're looking for information. So that's how the system works and therefore, guess what? Now, note that it also got tagged as wind shear because there is another leaf in the taxonomy that talks about wind shear. Right? 
Right? So that document gets tagged with wind shear, with turbulence encounter, to uh, weather, and so on and so forth, based on its content. So it's not just one tag, but multiple tags that allows me to, you know, be able to do different things um, to uh, uh, with the document. So here's the term store. Uh, <coughs> the uh, this is the uh, taxonomy manager, right? Uh, this is actually a uh, public domain uh, uh, taxonomy. Here's all the different rules. What, the, what we do uh, is we map that taxonomy to the term store, right? And that does, it's loaded automatically. You, you know, create the taxonomy, it gets loaded, populated. What is not stored, well, <clears throat> what is not stored, standard in SharePoint is all these rules right here. Okay? On SharePoint 2010, the, the, the uh, out of the box, uh, you know, the out of the box solution from the, our technology partner, uh, all this information is stored inside SharePoint. Okay? Uh, you don't see it when you don't manage it from the term store. You manage it from this application, but it synchronizes real time with SharePoint. Okay? For the other implementation that we use for uh, enterprise uh, uh, deployment, this information is stored outside of SharePoint. However, we do synchronize those taxonomies because when you're in SharePoint and you want to add managed metadata, you want to be able to pick them up from here, which is going to be synchronized from here. Right? And at the same time, from an uh, enterprise implementation, all the rules that you have inside SharePoint and that you apply for the documents inside SharePoint, you apply them across the enterprise. So now you're applying consistently across the whole enterprise, regardless of the, uh, the data source. So again, I'm talking faster. Your metadata environment, okay? Your taxonomy, right? So we automatically apply semantic metadata record retention codes, so on and so forth, right? Okay, any questions? No? Good. I'm doing either a good job or a bad job, but I'm doing a job. All right, so we talked about content types, right? There's a, <coughs> you can do this uh, in many, in different ways, okay? Uh, our technology, the, the partner has a, uh, a product that can plug us inside SharePoint, and then you can, you know, determine uh, the, uh, depending on the terms that the content uh, may have, you can decide either to move it or update the content. Okay, so based on the, you know, I tag it different ways. I'm looking for particular terms when I find out ah, this document has, uh, you know, social security number. Okay, so I'm going to move it to our location because this document is has PII and I don't want it on our website. Okay? So remember what happened in Texas a few a couple of years ago that the state published all of the uh, uh, teachers' personal information on their website and it was there for like I think it was a week or two weeks. Okay, those are the kind of things that nobody did it on purpose obviously, somebody did it oops, uh, but those are the kind of things that you have to be able to prevent. Important here is reusable, right? And oh, let me go back because I wanted, I couldn't remember now if I had the other term. Re, uh, managed setting for virus you know, of information in central reusable and standard, okay? Standard way, you always do. Once you set it, you all, it always does the same thing over and over and over again until you go back and change it. Uh, Important here is, again, the, in, in SharePoint, I don't know how many of you are, are familiar with the information rights management and management policies of documents inside SharePoint, but there's a number of things you can do with it. I am not an expert, so I just make reference to them. Uh, but again, by adding particular tags to a document, you can have SharePoint enforce certain rules. And those rules uh, from a, uh, record retention schedule, okay, you can apply, you know, this kinds of information. You can also apply what to do with the document, right? If all of a sudden this document has a, a FOUO, an FOUO tag, 
then you can tell Sherpon, hey, uh, do not allow anybody to print this document. Right? Or do not anybody allow anybody to download the content. Or, and, and certain people, you can, based on their um, access rights, they may not be able to see the document. So, again, application to different ways of application, same technology, same process, it can be used across the enterprise to apply different things, okay? You give the facility, give uh, the IT and other applications the ability to make decisions on, based on the content of the documents and the standard rules that you've set for their application, okay? Uh, this is not true, <laughs> okay? So let me switch. Uh, over to this video, uh, so I got I got a few minutes. Uh, any questions? Because of one video, what I'm going to show you is an inter a quote unquote simulation, not simulation, but a real implementation of an enterprise. Okay, I'm going to grab documents. I'm going to put it in Office 365. I'm going to grab the same exact document, put them on a shared drive. I'm going to let the system tag them. We're going to look at the documents, look at the tags, and we're going to see the same tags on both sides. Right. So that's what I'm going to show you. As long as this video works okay. All right. So uh, <clears throat> this is uh, uh, this is the uh, Office 365 environment or uh, demo environment. And what you're going to see that that's the that's my cursor. This is a presentation I did a few weeks a webinar I did on. Uh, on enterprise search, okay? Improving enterprise search. Again, same concept. I just take that the technology and I've talked to people about how you use this process and this technology to achieve that which you're looking to uh, achieve. So what you're gonna see me is refresh the library so that you see that there's no data in the library, right? And uh, I'm gonna have to go slow. I, I turned the volume off, right? Uh, so there's no data in the library, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm talking about the classification library, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add documents to the library, okay? Uh, so I will open, a, there we go. I'm going to grab a set of documents, the same exact set of documents. Uh, something important here, let me, uh, because I don't know how fast this is going, so. Um, <clears throat> emails, zip files, right? Think about this. If I have an email and the email has attachments, right? I want to be able to tag that email based on the content of the attachments. Because the email, all it may have in addition to my signature, it says, Jim, take a look at the attachments. Okay? So if all I do is classify based on the content of the email, it's worthless. Okay? So if I have attachments, I need, uh, what we do is we look at those attachments, we pull them out, we identify the tags, we accumulate all the tags of all the attachments, and we tag the document, I mean, we tag the email with all those tags, okay? Because it's the email that whenever I do a search, with my, whichever enterprise search engine I use, the email is what I'm gonna find, okay? Unless you're using our product, but that's a different story. But anyway, so, uh, but I'm going to classify and tag, and I'm going to move that email around. If that email, if there's an attachment that has PII, guess what? I'm going to grab that email and I'm going to move it someplace else, right? So, <coughs> whoops. The, uh, so that's one. Two, zip files or any archive files. It's the same thing. If you look at the content of a zip file, all you're going to see is a listing of the, of the files. The dates and time, that doesn't tell me anything other than the file names, right? So I could tag the zip file based on the file names of the attachment, the same thing with, with, the, uh, uh, with the email, but the bread and butter of what the content of the document is, is inside the document. So what we do is we process all the attachment and we recursively go through that tree. So if there's a, 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 an email that has a zip file and that zip file has another email that has attachment, we'll walk through it and that's what you want to do. And you cannot do that manually. You will be tagging till next two centuries. I don't know. <laughs> You'll be tagging forever. Okay? So let me keep going here. Uh, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab. Uh, well, here's what, what I'm showing you here, right? Is that I have an email. The email happens to have a zip file, right? 
and uh, I can't remember now if I actually opened the SIF file, no. Uh, the SIF file is right there. So I'm, I grab the documents, drag and drop them, I load them, okay? And what you're gonna see back here, if I move the folder, and I will in a minute, uh, is that, yeah, there we go. Here's all my uh, uh, taxonomies, right? So I'm gonna be looking at these documents, the back end is gonna be processing all this. Now this doesn't have to happen real time. You may want it to happen real time, and you could make it happen real time. But at the end of the day, the cost of it may not be worth the while, right? So now what I did is I connected to another server, right? Uh, our demo server, and I logged into the server, and I have a share drive here where I drag and drop the same files over, right? So <clears throat> what we do with files that are at, in, uh, in the share drives, okay? is that those files, what we do is we add custom properties. So your enterprise search engine, you can configure it to look to call for custom properties and look for particular patterns of information in the custom properties and index the, the data. So what happens now is I'm tagging documents, right? Uh, those documents can be, uh, whether you use Google, or you use FAST, uh, or whether you use concept searching or any other search engine or the uh, one of the freeware, uh, the freeware, the open source uh, search engine, right? They will all index that metadata and their ability to uh, return uh, documents and increase precision happens because of the metadata, okay? Uh, let's see, uh, where am I there? This is seven minutes, so I'm gonna be talking faster than this since I'm not driving this. Um, Okay, so what I'm talking about here is that, yeah, you can go here to the properties of a document uh, and go to the custom field, and you see that they're empty. This is where I got them from, right? The custom fields are empty. So when this process in the back end finishes, what you're going to find <coughs> is that now my custom fields, now I have an aviation, here's my values, when, weather, is a text, and we obviously add, uh, we track when a document was enhanced. You know, we, the process we call in data enhancement, okay? Hence our, the name of our product, data enhancement system, right? So we are enhancing the content by adding metadata to it. So anytime that document changes in the future, we will monitor it and we will then retag it again, okay? And here in SharePoint, the same thing happened, right? Here's all the tags. Okay, and all we're doing on this is just using the, uh, uh, the metadata. But here's the same document that I was using in my original demo, uh, in my slides, right? Oops, I went, oops, sorry about that. I'll just go ahead and continue. But anyways, so, and here's the email, and here's all the tags, right? Okay. And as you saw in the email, all it was is an attachment and my signature and a zip file. So that's in essence what we're talking about now. Now think about this, okay, and setting these rules at an enterprise level across departments so that you're not depending on different people across the organization to figure out what the document is about or where it should go. Okay? Whether it be in SharePoint guys or whether it be somebody else. See, if you're monitoring this at file shares and you find a document that because of the tag you know it needs to be in a SharePoint library in a particular site, then we can grab it because we know now what the document is and put it into the SharePoint library. Because that, and then remove it and delete it. And if we need to inform somebody, you can do, uh, we inform somebody and this can be done with the workflow. Yeah? So that's in essence uh, my story, okay, and I'm sticking to it. So any questions, okay? Because uh, actually I went, yeah, I mean, just in time. I got 10 minutes for questions, ideas, concepts. Uh, <clears throat> let me go back to uh, our... Okay, our sponsors here. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, did, did everybody follow? Okay. Does... Uh, does it sound kind of unrealistic? Is this realistic? I mean, it, it, uh, at least we've been successful with it. Uh, and uh, so it does work. 
It's not magic, but and it doesn't happen just overnight. There, there is not only technology, but there is a process to this. Okay? And it's you know, the concept of how do you eat an elephant, right? One bite at a time. A little bit, you take it, and you move it, and you slowly are deploying it. And as your business changes, then you make those changes, and then you reapply to the data sources that you want. You don't have to do it on every particular data source. So, come and see us there at the Kodak booth. It's actually Kodak Alaris, a new uh, company name. Uh, and uh, if uh, you don't give me a good uh, thing, please don't take a picture. No, seriously. <laughs> please let me know how it did. I, they will send me your anonymous uh, comments, and I will improve my presentation accordingly. Okay? If I get back great, you will not see me here next year. Uh, so, yeah, so everybody, uh, please, uh, yes, sir, question. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Sure. I'm, I'm fairly new to the shirt winner, so um, you have a, you have a uh, uh, metadata taxonomy set up, you have a document library, and you drag the documents into that library. What is the engine that scans or, or, or where is those documents for that information? Okay. Um, okay, so the question is, what is it, uh, the engine or technology that you that, uh, that does this, okay? Uh, the engine and technology, it is not a Microsoft product, okay? Microsoft does not have this uh, solution. Uh, Microsoft provides the infrastructure in SharePoint and within the Windows environment, I guess to be able to do this. We use a company by the name of Concept Searching. It's a, it's a UK based US company, right? And we, uh, Concept Searching provides an enterprise search engine, uh, all semantic uh, metadata extraction, the taxonomy management, uh, and the API. So what we do, depending on our customer, like I said earlier, if our customer says, hey, this is great, we love it, and we take the product from uh, concept searching, out of the box, plug it into SharePoint, and it's their technology that works. If they say, we want to do it outside of SharePoint as well, then we use their product, their technology, our product, and we can manage everything. Any other question? Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to make sure is that you're aware to come and join us at uh, the Houston SharePoint user group. Um, it's a great, uh, great uh, time we have there. I never win anything there, but other people always win. I win <laughs> She wins all. <laughs> but I've never won. Okay. But please come and join us. It's once a month, uh, and uh, okay. just go to uh, the h spug dot org site and register. And basically, you'll get notified at a time when uh, when we have a meeting. I. Uh, Sometimes they let me uh, speak there whenever, you know, whenever people forget about what I talked about. I got a couple of new uh, uh, presentations that I'm going to be adding to my repertoire with uh, regards to distributed uh, uh, capture, whether it be paper or electronic, as well as automation, etc. So please come and join us there as well. Okay? Well, thank you very much. My applause to you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, and come back if you want to see it in real time versus in a video, I'll show you and we can talk some more.